coming up on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. What a great looking, memory filled Stutz convertible. I bought it on my 16th birthday. Guess who originally owned this car? Tom Mix, the actor. The actor. And having problems at the gas pump? Try this. Just go to the airport and uh, get fuel. Really? I only know of just a few jet powered cars. Plus. And this one's kind of a big deal. The restoration of the last Hemi. It'll be built exactly the way it rolled off the assembly line, only nicer. When you think Explorer, bet this isn't what comes to mind. It was used on the Plymouth, the 1954. Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte, starts right now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. I'm Jeff Phelps, and we are in Canton, Ohio, for one of my all-time favorite automobile shows. In fact, it's as great as any car show you will find anywhere in the country. You even know that just by the name. It's the 17th annual Glenmore Gathering of Significant Automobiles, and significant they are. Bob, I've seen Darren's work on Packards before. I've never seen Darren's work on a Kaiser before. I love yours, and it is certainly a unique looking vehicle. Why did you want a Kaiser Darren? Well, I, I, I always thought they were so unique, and it has sliding doors. They're very low production, they only made up 400. I saw the first one when I was a teenager, and I kind of fell in love with it then. And, uh, and then a few years ago, when I had an opportunity to buy this one, it has nice, sleek, smooth, clean lines. It doesn't have a lot of chrome, but the sliding door future is real unique, as is the three position top. It has a Landau position top. And they're just sleek, they drive nice, run nice. Bob, finding a Corvette, okay, people can find a Corvette. How do you find a Kaiser Darren? Well, it's, <laughs> it's tough. I, there are only 400 made, and I, I kind of been looking for one for a long, long time, and uh, I sold another show car, and this one was advertised in Hemmings Motor News uh, in, from Denver, Colorado. And I bought it sight unseen and had it shipped in from Denver uh, in the winter, and uh, I'm quite happy with it. It's actually better than it was described. What were you expecting when you, when you bought a car well, like this sight unseen? Well, you know, the owner was negative about the car. He said it had some mechanical problems, which it didn't have. And uh, I thought, well, when I get it, I may have to have it re-chromed and repainted and did some things. I haven't really had to do anything other than detail it and mechanically bring it up to date and service it. It needed service bad. But I was expecting it not to be quite this good. But engine runs good, good compression, starts and runs. And uh, uh, I'm very, very happy with it. That isn't always the case. You mentioned the sliding door. Yes. What was Darren thinking? What was his philosophy behind putting a sliding door on a car? Well, it's, he, I, he apparently developed that back in the 20s and couldn't get anybody to go with it. And uh, then uh, when he went to work for the Kaiser Corporation in 1946, I think he had it in his mind. And then they had an opportunity to do this car. He uh, had patented that, that system and put it in this car. It works very well. No one else has ever tried it or did it. I don't know why, because uh, I, the tracks have to be kept clean and serviced, but it works well, it looks well, real unique. What's your favorite thing about this car, now that you own it, now that you've had it? Well, it, the really nice thing is I'm, I'm a little bit of an ego tripper. I like the way everybody swarms around the car and takes pictures of it. You mean like us? Yeah, like you. Yeah, good, you go. good. <laughs> but the, the fact is, uh, what's really neat, it's a nice driving car. Starts easy, very reliable, economical, it's got an electric overdrive. It's cruises down the road at road speeds. It's fun and smooth to drive. I like that the most. I think that's being practical. David, take one look at this thing and I, you don't know what to think. Is it the Batmobile reincarnated? What exactly do you have here? That's a 1963 Chrysler Turban. The car was built by Ghia. Uh, they built 55 of these cars. They were given to the people on the street to drive for like up to three months at a time and then they had, they had to critique the car and then uh, the car was given to someone else for three months. The cars were taken back and uh, tore apart and looked at for wear and tear and how, how they survived, you know, all these folks in them. And then um, it was a government funded project and uh, to see they if had turbine... to destroy the cars, so they destroyed 46 of them, and they kept nine of them. And uh, most of the important museums around the U.S. got a car, and uh, this car actually came out of the uh, 
Harris Collection in uh, Reno, Nevada. And how did it end up in your possession? Uh, about 20 years ago, it was at Hershey, Pennsylvania, and it was uh, actually sitting in the car corral for sale. Wow, which you'd never expect to see a car like this, nine of them left, sitting in a car corral for sale. Were you stunned? Well, I uh, stood uh, beside the car until uh, the man came back and uh, my dad bought the car. What we, features? We, we've had the car, you know, 20 years. That's, that's wonderful. What features does this car have, David? You look at it and obviously it's a different looking vehicle in every which way. Oh, well, sure it is. Yeah, it's got a, a you know, a turbine powered engine in it. it, runs on Jet A fuel. It's got a torque flight transmission behind it. The car uh, didn't have air in it, uh, but it did have air brakes. The car has its own little compressor and it has air brakes as if, you know, like a, a big truck would have today. What do you do for the fuel? Uh, you can uh, take off and just go to the airport and uh, get fuel. And you do? You have to, yes. <laughs> and they're okay with that? Uh, you know, a few of them, you know, try to give, you know, talk about e EPA de doesn't allow jet fuel to be burning cars. Well, you know, I only know of just a few jet powered cars, so <laughs> why, why would the EPA care if it's yeah. burning a car or not, you know? What was Chrysler thinking? What was their, and the government backing this, but what was the whole concept behind the thing? The whole thing was for alternative fuels. And they knew at some point we were going to have a, a, a gas crunch. They were and, right. And the, uh, the car would run on, you know, grain alcohol, uh, kerosene, um, perfume, uh, whatever would, would ignite, the car could run on. Owning one of the nine that exists, David, have you seen any of the others? Oh, are you, yes. Are you buddies with those guys now? It's a very small club. Um, one of the guys I know that owns one, and then uh, uh, the rest of them are in uh, museums, and they're really not held by uh, someone an private, you know. Yeah. You have to deal with a uh, you know, whole group of folks. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. It's interesting, it's unique, and you tell a great story with it. Okay, thank you. Not only did cowboy actor Tom Mix own this cord, it was the last car he ever drove. The reports on the scene get, were that he just came flying out and that was it. The tragic story and fabulous restoration next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Sally, Tina, Betsy, you've developed quite a bond with your classic car. Let the consignment professionals at RK Motors Charlotte make the selling process as painless as possible. Through precision marketing and large customer base, we all but guarantee a sale at maximum value, and we don't get paid until your car sells. We've sold over 1,500 classic cars here at RK Motors Charlotte, and now we'd like to get to know Betsy, at least for a little while. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Bob, we love cars that have a story behind them, an interesting history. I've never heard of one more interesting than the history of your cord. Oh, thank you. That's a pretty interesting uh, historical icon, really. Originally owned by? Tom Mix. The actor. Yeah, the actor. He did, Tom Mix did 348 movies. All but eight were silent. Uh, so he was the highest paid employee in Hollywood, or actor in Hollywood in the teens and 20s. Not only is this his old car, the actual car. Yes. He died in this car. Yes, he was thrown out of it. And uh, he had these special aluminum suitcases. And one of those suitcases ended up hitting him in the neck and breaking his neck. Otherwise, he might have survived it because he, the, the reports on the scene get, were that he just came flying out and that was it. Didn't roll or anything. Yeah. And then the suitcase hit him. And the suitcase hit him. And you have a suitcase very similar to the one that killed him. It took us a year and a half to find one. Wow. Right. Yeah. How did you ever find this car? And, and were you looking for it? Well, you have to go back a little bit because I grew up near the 101 Wild West Show Ranch in Oklahoma and Kansas. And uh, they traveled the world in the, in the teens and 20s and 30s. Tom Mix started out with them. 
And so we also like cords. And the one-on-one ranch and Tom X, and when it came available for auction two years ago, we jumped on that pretty quick. Had you had your eye on it for years, or did it just all happen all at once? It just all happened at once, yep. And you have restored this car to the way he had this car. Right. How do you do such a thing? I bet we have as much time <clears throat> and hours in research as we do in restoring the car. Because we restored it, of course, to 1937 Ford standards, but he had all these personalized things he put on the car. You know, he put leather work on the car. Remember, he's a cowboy. He had a gun holster in the car. have to have leather. Yeah, of course. He had a gun holster. He had his, his uh, 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 pedal, gas pedal, uh, in leather with a, a, a section chromed in the back so he could rest his, his uh, boot in it. Uh, he, had, he had medals that the King of Denmark gave him. And it took a year and a half to get the state of Oklahoma to approve us copying those. So we went through a long list of things. The leather. Uh, I found the leather for this car in the attic in a, of a guy out in California who used to own the car in the 70s. So I called him up like I'm doing all this research and he said, oh yeah, you know, I think I've got some parts from that car. So I go see him. He's about 90. I just had knee surgery. He had bad back. We, <laughs> we crawled around his attic for two hours and we found not only the leather, but the siren that he had in the car. So. Yeah, that's just how we did, did it and just did a lot of research. And why did the state of Oklahoma have to give you permission? Well, it's the historical society and they do, just don't take things out of the museum and let anybody copy them. How long did the restoration take? Restoration was about a year and a half. We had sometimes seven guys working on it at one time. And the last two weeks even to get it here, we put in 700 man hours in two weeks Goodness. to get it to this show. So this is fresh? Five days old. What has the reaction been? I, I'm sure you were anticipating what this reaction might be to this car, not only done so beautifully, but with the history behind it. You know, it's better than I expected. I mean, I, I really feel fortunate to be here and to be able to show this car to people, because everybody appreciates uh, this kind of a car. And, and all these cars are great cars, but it's the history that makes it really interesting, I think. Was the car anywhere near the condition of what Tom Mix had it in when he last was in this car? When I acquired it? Yes. No, it had several, super, you know, really paint jobs and really superficial restorations. This is the first time it's ever been taken apart and, and a frame off restoration done on it. And done the way he had it. Right, yeah, yeah. Bill and Christine, I walked by and I saw a beautifully restored Stutz. And then I read the story. Bill, you owned this car when you were 16 years old. I bought it on my 16th birthday. On your 16th birthday. Yeah. Hey, Christine, Bill held on to this car for how long? How long did well, you I had it from uh, 1947 until 64 mm -hmm. when I had to sell it. Ouch. Ouch, very ouch. <laughs> I wasn't in his life then, so I wouldn't have made him sell it. No, we <laughs> would have, have made him hang on to it. We yes. would have starved together for a while instead <laughs> of selling the car. So from 1964 until 2004, where was this car? Where was your car? It was in uh, the Cleveland area, and uh, it, it sat, fortunately, unused for all that time, 40 years. And you kept tabs on it? I sure did. And in 2004, Christine, what happened? The, um, the, the people who owned it finally came to him and said, we're getting older, we'd like the money, we'll sell it back to you. And it took, what, three seconds to it's say not, yes? Not even that. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2004, what did this car look like? Uh, well, the engine was out of it, and uh, it didn't look all that shabby. Basically, the engine was sitting there, and uh, um, the supercharger was not on it. Um, Parts were gone, but you know, it, to a guy that wants his car back, <laughs> it was perfect. What were you thinking with the restoration, Christine, when this car came back to your possession and all of a sudden you have a new project on your hands? Well, we had projects that lasted a lot longer than that, so it, well, I figured it was going to be a few years. And this was a seven year restoration? Yeah. And it just finished up when? Tuesday. <laughs> Seriously. I, Actually, we were supposed to take the car to Pebble Beach. We were invited there this year, but it was not quite finished, so we had to decline. 
when you restored this car, Bill, were you thinking, I want to restore it to original, or I want to restore it like I had it in 1947, no. or was it both? To original. It's the right colors, everything's right, just like it was. What does it mean after, I mean, this was the car of your youth. Yes, this it this was, I mean, this was your first car. It was my studs. And now it's your studs again. That's right. What does that mean to you after all these years? Oh, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's the I'm first have, time he drove it for today. Yeah, right today, the first time I drove it was taking it out to the uh, judges stand there. Could you turn back the memory and, and think of the 16-year-old kid driving this car and compare the drives? Uh, it's probably driving a hell of a lot better now than it did then. I guess it better after all the I, money and the restoration, right? I think so, right? yes. <laughs> so now what do you do? You, you have what's probably the prized possession in your collection back. What, what do you do with it now, Christine? Well, we'll enjoy it. We will tour with it because yeah. we don't have trailer queens, and but we'll take it to shows too, no problem. And he'll he'll have it in in the in the garage somewhere and look at it almost every day, pet it. Yeah, you, I was going to say, you know, if, if you're looking for him in the house and you can't find him. Oh, I know where he is. Yeah, no Always. problem. <laughs> Bill, congratulations. Thank you. Thank That's you. a it's a wonderful car, and an even more wonderful story. Boy, I'm just delighted. I'm telling you. Thank you. Automotive history, Hemi style, restored before our very eyes. This would be a dynamite build, just, uh, just a pleasure to do something like this. The last Hemi is next on Cruise In, presented by RK Motor Charlotte. Handling classic and high performance vehicles requires an industry leading team of experts. Welcome to RK Motor Charlotte. Industry leading means meticulous attention to detail when servicing every vehicle. It means a consignment service so fine-tuned that a successful sale at maximum value is all but guaranteed. And a rigorous inspection on every vehicle before its tires even touch our sales floor. It's all this and more that make RK Motor Charlotte the industry leader. Visit rkmotorcharlotte.com. From start to finish, the restoration of the last Hemi. At first glance, it looks like just a great old 1971 Dodge Charger RT in need of a little tender loving care. But it's oh so much more than that. Let's start with a few facts. Well, the Hemi is the 426 Hemi, the, the NASCAR engine that was built by Chrysler back in the early 60s. Um, they produced these cars in a street version from 66 through 71. Um, it's a legend, the Hemi cars are, you know, the highest dollar Chrysler product cars there are in the market. And yes, Joe's Charger RT is a Hemi, but it's not just any Hemi. This is the very last 426 Hemi to ever be built by the Chrysler Corporation. The, the car, last one. The very last one ever to roll off any assembly line anywhere. That makes this 1971 Dodge Charger RT a critical piece of automotive history. A piece of history that's been entrusted to the restoration professionals at RK Motors Restoration. We'll follow the project, the restoration of the last Hemi, from beginning to end, right here on Cruise In. And this one's kind of a big deal. We really, uh, you know, being that it, it's heritage of what it, what it is, uh, and the fact of just to find an unmolested, untouched, real, somewhat gem as it sits, it's, it's, it's really good for our shop. It's, it's a good way to showcase a lot of our talents, too. We've done a lot of high-end, Hemi restorations, especially Hemi's, um, and some crazy Mopars, and this one fits our build of what we're after and what showcases our talents best. Now, what's your vision? What do you want this car to look like? Better than new. It'll be built exactly the way it rolled off the assembly line, only nicer. You know, this time it'll be hand-built, not assembly line built, um, but it's gonna have every sticker, you know, exactly the way it rolled off the assembly line. This one we're going to knock out of the park with all NOS parts, um, OEM sheet metal, anything we can use. We're, we're going to try not to have one reproduction aftermarket piece on this car. Um, so if it can't be restored, it's going to be painstakingly hunted, hunted down. Um, this is going to be a big deal here. This will be a dynamite build. Just, uh, just a pleasure to do something like this. For more on the restoration of the last Hemi, 
visit our website at thelasthemi.com. When it comes to restoring or servicing your classic or high-performance car, expertise is the name of the game. And that's precisely what you'll find at RK Motors. You'll find our expertise in the attention to detail that can only be acquired through years of working on world-class builds. You'll also find our expertise in the RKM Performance Center, where we've assembled a team of highly qualified ASC certified mechanics. When expertise is the name of the game, trust the experts at RK Motors. Visit rkmotorscharlotte.com. Now back to the Glenmore gathering of significant automobiles on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte. Leslie, now we know Explorer as the name of the highest selling sports utility vehicle in history. Little did we know that it was on a 54 Plymouth concept car, a Plymouth Explorer. Well, a lot of names that we're familiar with today were used previously on different kinds of cars. The, the Falcon name was used on a Chrysler Dream car, and so was the Explorer name, it was used on a Plymouth, the 1954. This is a fabulous looking car, and how many were made? This car is a one of a kind. Uh, it's on a Plymouth chassis, so underneath all that loveliness is a flathead six cylinder <laughs> engine. It looks like it'll go, like it'll rocket to the moon, but it'll, uh, it'll do it uh, with great economy. <laughs> Leave it to Plymouth to come up with something like that. Yeah. How did this come to be in the museum's collection? You're with the Peterson Automotive Museum with, in Los yeah, Angeles. I'm with the Peterson Automotive Museum, and, and Mr. Peterson became aware of a couple of cars in the collection. And um, he, he acquired this and another car in a private transaction about eight years ago. How do you come up with the restoration process to make it look like it did in 1954, Leslie? Because as you said, one of a kind car, how do you know to restore it to what specifications? Restoration involves different processes depending on the car. When you have a one of a kind car like this, you have to rely on original photographs either from uh, Chrysler Plymouth or from Ghia themselves, and you, you, you pour over those, and if you're lucky enough to find a color picture, then that can give away even more details. And when it comes to the paint color, you just look at areas of the car that had not been painted over by subsequent owners, and then you, you, you can find some virgin paint that you can match. Leslie, after this car was a concept car, not on the show tour, what happened to it? Do you have any idea the life it led until it became part of your collection? There's nothing older than last year's concept car. So what a lot of companies did is they just gave them to their senior executives or secretaries or other preferred employees or sold them on the open market. Or sometimes a coach builder even took them back and put them in their own collections or sold them as used cars back in Italy or France or wherever else they came from. We really don't, we don't know exactly where this car went when it was finished with its job on the show circuit. But we do know that at one point it was painted brown and it had a, a circular, more of a circular grill on it that really didn't complement the lines of the car very well. So uh, when, we, when we wanted it to be back to its original and we're so thrilled that it is. I mean, there's, there's no other color like this green. And when you look at it, you can't, you, you can't possibly imagine the car looking better in any other color. Well, Leslie, it's beautiful. And thank you for bringing it from Los Angeles to share with us here in Canton. We're so happy to, to be here at the Glenmore Gathering. It's a thrill. The finest automobiles from all over North America come to this event each and every year, and you should too. It is absolutely heaven for a classic car enthusiast. The Glenmore Gathering of Significant Automobiles in Canton, Ohio. I'm Jeff Phelps. We'll see you next time on Cruise In, presented by RK Motors Charlotte.